Florida football recruiting is on fire. Since the month of June began, the Gators have secured eight verbal commitments. Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's gone into this list of commitments, why they're important, the significance not only for Florida, but Georgia and other programs that are recruiting against them, and the long-term ramifications for the Gators. Let's start off with the backdrop. Now, Billy Napier and his staff had done a good job, number one, of getting all these kids organized to come up for the visits. The second, the ninth, the 16th, those recruiting weekends are done, and they still have more kids coming up later this month, 23rd, etc. But all that groundwork is a long time frame. You've got to give the guys credit. They did a really good job, especially coming off a disappointing season in 2022. To get all these really good players on campus, that's effort. you got to give them a pat on the back. Number two, the visits obviously went very well, showing them the swamp, the academic profile, the social profile. The University of Florida has a lot to offer. That doesn't mean you can just roll out the ball, as they say, on game day and make it happen. No, quite the opposite. You have to tailor your recruiting visits to each individual, his high school coach, his mother, his grandmother, his girlfriend, whatever it may be, and hope that that's the right fit. But then again, going back to it, being organized. That's something they had to have been on the visits, not just getting them here. They knew what to do. They had four guys commit just this past weekend during the visits, including Aaron Childs, who everybody had pegged to head to the University of Michigan. He since has decided not to take that visit, let alone keep them in consideration. I mean, that's incredible for the University of Florida football program. Third, and this is the one that's unique, it just seems to be a groundswell. Now it's the cool school, and it's why they're hot on the recruiting trail. They got two more commitments on Monday, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the recruitments in general, but I'm going to, I'm going to focus on two guys. Now, the Gators needed to get bigger and stronger up front. We all know that based on their rival being Georgia, and they're a very physical football team, probably the most physical in the country. That's fair. So what do you do? Four out of their last six commitments from the last few days are from the state of Georgia, including the two they've gotten today from the state of Georgia, one of which the dogs really, really wanted. Matter of fact, Georgia is determined to still get him. We'll get into that in just a moment. Maskell, he is from South Gwinnett High School, offensive tackle. He's give or take 290, 300 pounds, very athletic kid. He had offers from numerous programs. A lot of people thought maybe LSU, maybe NC State, et cetera. He picks the Gators. But the one in particular, and I've got this one circled on my sheet down here, this one's a real, real interesting scenario because you would think just based on his frame, he fit Georgia because they run a lot of odd fronts, three-man line, et cetera. That's Kirby Smart to a T. But then again, maybe Florida's going to do some of that too. I don't know. But they've traditionally been a 4-3, and they've had some big size up front at times too, but they needed some more regardless of what fronts they're going to use in the class of 24. Micah Barrow, I'm going to probably pronounce that wrong, but he's at Creekside. I know that program well. It's just south of Atlanta, and he's a massive kid. Depending on which publication you go look at, he's listed at like 380, 390. Well, he's lost a lot of weight. He transferred to Creekside, and their staff and everybody around had done a good job of getting him down a little bit, getting him in better shape. He's under 350 now but he's still a kid that's athletic and can move. He's not just a two-gap guy that's just going to take one, one spot up and kind of run around in that little area. He can move laterally. That's another reason Georgia wanted him and still is adamant about going after him. That's the kid I mentioned a moment ago. He can dunk a basketball. He can run. He can get out in space and be involved in the screen game. If you're going to beat Georgia, not only do you need players that are good enough to play there, you also need to beat them for some of those plays because if this young man didn't select the Gators, he would have selected the dogs. That was the second pick. Very big pickup for Napier and his staff. So long way to go, but getting those kind of kids is important. And again, I want to reiterate, four out of their last six are from the Peach State. Another kid that I want to talk about, though, and this is somebody, and I don't know how this happened, Amir Williams is another defensive lineman, edge D tackle, whatever he wants. He, he can play whatever he wants. He's from Clinton, North Carolina. 
And he plays running back for his high school. He, he was probably 235, 240 last year, I'm guessing, by watching his film. This kid is not just good. He is electric. And it's not somebody that's even close to tapped out either. Once he gets to the University of Florida, look out. Three tech and five tech, I think, were his best spots long term. But when you look at this kid's film, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not real sure that he couldn't play some weak side in at about 270 once this stuff really filling out. He's got that kind of explosiveness. If you can do that and teams know that you have a special player on the edge, and again, he can move down inside. He'll move around. But on third and eight, they see him line up outside with the kind of athletes like Childs, et cetera, that the Gators are now getting. You can drop seven and have those kind of athletes coming up front. Man, that changes your defense. You got to give them a lot of credit for mixing and matching these pieces together because not, not many teams are really going to be able to do that. Florida's capitalized here. They're, they're selling playing time, I'm sure, too. But I'm telling you, if you want to watch some really good film on Maris Williams, kid right here on my sheet, that's, that is one hell of a football player. And to be honest, the most fun was watching him play running back. Not many guys wanted to get in front of him. And I don't blame him. He was a wrecking ball. So to summarize, the Gators have gotten four out of their last six are from Georgia. And, and more than that, overall, in the entire class, we've only got two kids from Florida and got six from Georgia. That's a unique trend. And they're, they're taking kids away from the two-time defending champs and their arch rival. That's going to impact the entire SEC. Teams need to see Georgia come down a notch. Let's just be honest. They, they've been on a roll on the field, off the field, everything. They're starting to lose a few battles. I don't really know why, but you got to give everybody that's going after these kids for the Gators, and it includes all their staff, not just coaches, recruiting staff, equipment staff, everybody. Got to give them a lot of credit. They have done a tremendous job. So I expect these battles to continue. It's not like Georgia or Auburn or Alabama or any of these schools that are recruiting some of these kids are going to give up on them either. Florida still has to battle all the way through signing day. It's no different than any other year in the Southeastern Conference. But I am pretty excited to see Florida doing good just because it's good for college football. I'm not even a Gators fan, but I'm honest. It's better when Florida is at least viable in the SEC East. Right now, they're probably going to have a tough season, but they're recruiting like this, which gives you hope for the long term. Got to enjoy it. So Florida Gator fans, celebrate a little bit. They're doing really well, and uh, it, it's probably just going to continue the way they're on fire. Please like this podcast, please subscribe, please share it, and most importantly, let's hear your thoughts. Which ones of the kids that have committed to the Gators or are still on the board do you find the most intriguing? Or if you have something else you want to talk about, fire away. More than happy to talk about it. Everybody have a great day.